What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now and looking to trade on the last day of October, heading into the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, I'm currently in two stocks that I plan on swing trading and I want to share with you guys my thoughts on those stocks, my entry points, and my planned exit points if everything goes according to my plan. So if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And a quick reminder, guys, the Strive Smart merch store is dropping here on the 4th of November. So there is a link at the top of the description if you do want to put your email there so you can get notified when the store drops drops, new promotions, new products, no spamming whatsoever. Simply click that link and put in your email and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group if you want to be further connected with our community and those are 100% free of charge. So guys, let's get right into it. Starting off here with the SPX, which ended up closing the day down $9.21 here, down 0.3%. And if we go here to the one day, one minute, we can see that it was actually a lot worse in the beginning of the day. We actually dumped from 3045 all the way down here to around 30.23, which was a loss of around 22 points in the first hour and 10 minutes of the market. And then we held this 30.27 level very beautifully, which you all know at this point, or most of you guys probably know at this point, that level was the old all-time high. And the fact that we saw four separate bottoms right around that area, that's a good sign. And the fact that we broke above uh, moving average resistances towards Towards the last, I guess you can say, hour of the day and power hour, that's another good sign here that the S&P is holding those levels as resistances or rather as supports and that it's looking to potentially continue this upswing here over the next couple of days. And if we go to the one hour chart, guys, you know, that bounce on 3027 today, that quadruple bounce that we got, those four separate bottoms, that really put us on top of this 50 SMA on the one hour chart at a higher low from the previous. So right now, the S&P is still in an uptrend, right? Although we've been selling off these past couple of days, you know, this has simply been, in my eyes, a healthy pullback since the markets have been doing very well here over the past couple of days. Remember, everything, whether it's a stock, ETF, you know, the, uh, an index, whatever it may be, if it's going up a lot over a span of, uh, you know, a couple weeks, a couple days, whatever it may be, there's going to be a time where it does see a retracement. It does cool off. That is healthy, right? And that's what I think we're seeing here on the S&P. So overall, it's still on an uptrend, guys. We're still holding, you know, old all-time highs as support levels. So this is looking good. And in my opinion, based on the technicals here, we could be seeing higher levels either tomorrow or this upcoming week, um, <clears throat> you know, based on what I'm seeing here. So going to the Dow Jones, industrial average guys this one ended up closing on 27k at 27k which is a good sign because that is a strong level of support that I'm seeing and that we've been talking about over the past couple of videos we actually ended up closing the day down 140 points here on the Dow way worse than the S&P down about 0.52 percent and let me show you guys on a closer basis here what we're working with and the fact that we closed again 27k above it you can see how you know that's a pretty good sign, right? Because back over, you know, during these these time periods, 27K, 2750-ish was a resistance. We sold off from there down to about 26.7. We ended up popping up above 27K, 2750. We held it a couple of days. We saw a bearish move today in the beginning of the day, you know, when we ended up selling off. But ultimately, that last little push, 
end power hour pushed us above 27k again which is a good sign so ultimately i'm looking to see what's the dow going to do here do we fill the gap up to 27400 which is that all-time high do we break above that and hit another all-time high a new fresh all-time high that's kind of what i'm waiting for and looking for here in the dow jones industrial average so <clears throat> Not much to talk about, honestly, guys, just looking at that horizontal channel and really at what these large caps are going to be doing tomorrow pre-market, what these futures are going to be looking like to really assess what we could be doing and trading in terms of tomorrow's session, right? Let's say the markets are gapping down heavily, large caps are red. We may go to some of these market ETFs that do well when the markets sell off, like, you know, SQQQ, TVIX, if you like playing volatility, you you know, SPXS goes up whenever the s and is going off. These are some that will trade. I'll personally trade if these markets look like they're going to be selling off, um, you know, tomorrow and especially heading into the following week. You know, the whole idea here is to have multiple different, you know, scenarios in your head like, okay, markets go up, I'm trading this. Markets go down, I'm trading that. So it's always good to have multiple, you know, things to trade for both directions of the market so you can profit, honestly, on the upside and the downside. That's super important in my eyes. So going over here to the NQ, you guys can see currently down about $3.25, but that's not what it closed at. This is the futures. Uh, these are the futures rather. Let me pull up the NASDAQ on my phone. I can see here we ended up closing down 11 points down 0.14%. So nothing crazy there in terms of the NASDAQ. We saw Facebook and Apple do very well in terms of their earnings. Those were two of the pretty much only stocks on my watch list that were actually green today, right? A lot of the other stocks, you know, you can see at Netflix, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, those ended up closing red here. You know, if I go to my active watch list, you guys can see a lot of these stocks ended up closing well or red as well. So, you know, NQ didn't really get too affected to the upside today, you know, in terms of, you know, Facebook and Apple stock, it was kind of just flat. And if we look on the one day or rather, yeah, the one day, one minute, you guys can see we simply just kind of descended for the entire day today. Nothing too crazy, right? If we go back to that four hour chart, the good thing that I'm seeing is we are holding 8050 old all time high as a new support that is healthy in my eyes. And if we go back to that uh, hourly chart or two, it rather we're still holding that uptrend even though we pulled down over these past couple of days and again just like I said on the S&P guys I think this is taking a bit of a breather here because everything that goes up it's going to see a healthy retracement at some point and uh, that's what I think we're seeing here on the NQ if this trend ends up breaking if we do something like that that's going to be a bit worrisome here for the bulls in my opinion we may be in for a bigger sell-off if this ends up breaking, but as of now, I think the bulls are in charge. We're holding a higher low, and I do see potential based on what these technicals are looking like right now for a higher push here in the NASDAQ. So that's kind of my thoughts on the markets. Quick little technical breakdown. Let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on these markets. I would love to know. So, guys, let's talk about what I ended up doing today. Honestly, it wasn't a crazy day today for me. No day trading. I simply held on to my McDonald's swing trade, which is one of the two swing trades that I'm currently in right now. And let's talk about this and why I see potential in it. So overall, you know, McDonald's has been getting squashed over the past couple of weeks. They reported earnings. They missed their earnings. But the way the stock reacted, it seems like, you know, you know, the stock had terrible earnings. The earnings were not terrible. They weren't great. They were kind of like mediocre, I guess you can say, kind of bad because I believe they missed on, um, I think it was EPS they missed on, but they weren't, it wasn't like an abysmal earnings, right? It was one of those that wasn't good, but you guys know, kind of know what I mean. It was kind of, uh, you know, below average, I guess you can say, right? And then the stock ended up tanking. And honestly, even before that, the stock's been seeing, um, you know, a bit of a, a, a sell-off period, right? And that's, in my opinion, due to the stock becoming extremely overvalued. Even now, if you're looking at it as an investment for the long term, 
which in these at these levels, I'm not looking at it for that reason. I'm looking at it as a swing trade. But if you're looking at it for a long-term investment here, you got you have to realize the PE is at a 25. So that's pretty expensive, um, in my opinion, for me to buy long here in terms of long, long term. You know, I'd need to see it probably into the 170s, 160s. But as a swing trade here, guys, I think there is short-term profit potential, especially if we break out of this 180 SMA, or not the 180 SMA, the 50 SMA, which is this green line here, and especially if we start to break back into the 200s. So if you guys watched my video yesterday, I talked about how I'm in McDonald's right now. I believe it's at about $194 and... Um, I think 60-ish cents, 194.50, right around this area, right? And my goal with this trade is to hold it and add more money if we break above 198, and especially, like I said, into the $200 level. And my first sell target is going to be at 206 bucks. So ideally, like I said, I need to see the break above 198 into 200 and above that 50 SMA. And overall, if I get a weighted position, guys, because right now I'm only in with about 10, 15 to about 20% of my goal position. You know, if I add, you know, two more stakes into the swing trade, I think my average could be up here at about 198 if everything goes right, maybe even 200 bucks. And up to that first sell, which is 206 bucks, it's going to be around a 4% profit. So this is the first one that I'm in right now. The technicals are still looking good. The, the uptrend is holding. The reversal is holding because because take a look at this, guys. We actually sold off a bit today, but we held that 50 S. Or why do I keep switching the moving averages today, guys? It's the 180 SMA we held here on the five day five minute at a higher low from the previous, and we're gapping up after hours. So this is looking attractive to me. Uptrend still holding, the reversal to the upside still holding. But again, tomorrow I'd love to see a break into 197, 198, really into 198, 200 before adding another position. So McDonald's, I'm in that one right now. I plan on holding this probably if everything goes correct. This could be around a two, three week swing trade, you know, maybe even a month if, if, if it really slows down here and doesn't really move too quickly. So that's kind of the move there. And one that I added today, guys, is Facebook. Like I've been mentioning on the channel a lot, I want to add a swing position and build a swing position in Facebook, ideally after their earnings, which were yesterday. They did well on earnings. Stock went up to 200. We got a nice pull down today, which kind of gave me the go, the buy signal on Facebook. So let's break down some technicals that I'm seeing here, starting off with the four hour chart. So we can see that we clearly broke into the next channel here, which is between 192 up to about $205. And this happened yesterday, again, when they reported great EPS numbers, great revenue numbers, the stock went up to 200 bucks after hours. And we see here on the one day, one minute, we hit 200 bucks. We actually hit almost 200 again this morning about 198 and we ended up selling off pretty aggressively all the way down to 192. So in my eyes, what's going through my mind here, right? Good earnings report, good EPS, good revenue, all that stuff. We hit 200 bucks and then we sold off. What does that sell off do? It opens up that margin of profit. So right off the bat, I see 4% opened up here and that in my head, it's like, okay, nice pullback, margin of profits opened, good earnings, good everything right now that I'm that I'm personally seeing this is opening up as a good trade based on my analysis right so you can see here on the hourly chart when I ended up getting in I needed to see it hold um, you know what I was thinking is I need to see it hold this one hour chart um, the 50 SMA on the one hour chart before getting in and that's actually what I ended up doing you know, I think I ended up getting in during this time period here. It wasn't in the beginning of the day. Again, I need I needed to see that support on the 50 SMA on the hourly chart. I kind of jumped the gun a bit because, you know, we ended up holding it, but we didn't get the full on breakup yet. But I feel comfortable here either way, adding an initial position. And, and the reason is, you know, if you go in with initial positions, guys, with small, maybe 10, 20% right off the bat, you can be a bit more... Um, 
what what's the word? You can be a bit more risky, right? You can buy in before it fully confirms to, you know, the reversal to the upside. And that's kind of what I did here. I bought a little bit in. And once we start to break into the mid 190s again, if we do, that's where I'll add the second position. And then above 200 is probably where I'll add the third position, right? So I feel comfortable holding it here with about 10, 15%. And let's say it doesn't go my way. The beautiful thing about scaling in is you wouldn't lose as much money if it were to reverse as you would have lost if you put your entire position in at once. So right now I'm in Facebook, right? I think the exact target or the price rather is about 192.20, 192.30, right around there. And the goal is again to add more money in the mid 190s you know, add more money, maybe close to 198, 200 bucks, and then ultimately have a weighted position of around, let's say, you know, 196, 197, and then sell off some shares at 205, maybe even 215, 210, if it does end up breaking 205. So those are some um, thoughts on Facebook, and those are the two stocks that I'm swing trading right now, and that's kind of the, you know, trading update as well for today, and kind of summarizing what I did yesterday at as well. So rapid fire now, guys, let's go through some stocks that reported earnings today and that are reporting earnings tomorrow. Starting off here with good old KHC. They finally, finally saw a crazy move to the upside here, guys. And for those of you all that don't know, Kraft Heinz has been a disaster. Their business has been crumbling. They cut the dividend a couple of months ago. The stock went from 50 bucks down to 33 bucks. And whenever a stock that's known for paying a dividend, you know, a, a healthy dividend as KHC once was, whenever a stock like that cuts the dividend, that scares a lot of these dividend income investors. And these people, right, that invest in companies like this, they rely on this cash flow. And when they see that cash flow being cut, what do they do? They flee from that stock a lot of the time, right? And they go to a company that pays a more secure cash flow. Because let's say, for example, you're 60, 70 years old, you're retired, you want to live off of your dividends. I, if I was that age, I for sure wouldn't want my money in KHC if they're cutting that dividend. I'd rather put it in a stock that's raising their dividend. I'd rather have my money in like Johnson & Johnson, for example, maybe Procter & Gamble, a stock like that. So that's, in my opinion, what explains this massive drop. They cut the dividend. A lot of people were being scared out. Now we're starting to see some price action to the upside, which is pretty attractive here. Let me show you guys their earnings because off the top of my head, I do forget to be completely honest with you guys, but okay, here we go. Sales. Um, where are they guys? Here we go. Adjusted EPS, 69 cents, beats the 54 cents um, uh, expected. So EPS crushed, but their sales missed 6 billion versus 6.14 billion. So EPS killed it. That's clearly what is driving, um, you know, KHC stock here off of a glance, a brief glance. So it's worth watching over the next couple of days here what this thing is going to do. In my opinion, it might cool off a bit, maybe down to about 30 30 bucks, but this could be the momentum it needs to start rallying up a bit slowly. So I think it's worth watching here. Ticker symbol KHC. AbV is another one that's reporting earnings tomorrow, guys. AbV hit 80 bucks today on a tear from 62 up to where we are now, nearly 80 bucks. We pulled down. We're holding that support at around $79, $79.30. This is a good sign, guys. This could be us potentially filling the gap up to 81 bucks from here if we do end up popping, giving us about a 3% move. But again, they're reporting earnings tomorrow. This could fluctuate the stock up or down heavily, which is why I'm waiting until they report, see what they do, even if it costs me the move. Honestly, guys, a lot of the time when I wait until after their report, I miss out on the move. And a lot of people do as well. But for me, most of the time, guys, I don't like taking a massive gamble on earnings like that. Sure, sometimes I do it. We are all guilty of doing it sometimes. People do it a lot of the times, right? But for me, only do it sometimes. Most of the time, I like waiting until after, even if it means missing um, the, the, the move. But in this case, you know, I'm going to wait and see. 
And if I miss it, oh well. If I don't miss it, I can end up profiting on this little gap here if we do end up um, potentially filling that. So Baba is another one. I think they're reporting earnings tomorrow. I'm pretty positive they are. Yep, November 1st. You can see that here. And uh, that's before market. This is setting up pretty, pretty interestingly here. Take a look at the strong resistance at 178. Very strong. We've gotten hit there once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, guys. We've gotten rejected there nine times. I think this could be a breakout play up to about 188, 187, 190 if we get a positive earnings report tomorrow. So this could be a morning play for sure. Lots of margin here, about 4 or 5%. And uh, honestly, this could end up filling up that gap tomorrow. Believe it or not, guys, Alibaba, you know, these growth stocks, they pop up five, six percent like it's nothing after hours, you know, when they report earnings, even before market hours. So I wouldn't be surprised if that runs up, if it's volatile pre-market. Um, again, I think that's very, very good uh, potential play here. So to finish off, guys, let's go quickly. You guys, the guys, we saw a massive pullback in you guys today. Um, short story or rather long story short, the report today favored D guys. We got that massive dump in you guys. But the one thing I'm liking here is we are holding 1560 here and into the aftermarket session. We're actually doing quite well here after hours. Um, and we held that 1560 level two days ago, or was that yesterday? Either way, we held it in the past, and you guys saw what it did from there. It ran up to almost 18 bucks. So this is worth watching here. You know, if we end up gapping up tomorrow, we could fill up to 1660. That is possible. That's kind of what I'm waiting for here. But if uh, natural gas in the short term continues to dump, of course, we're going to be playing D gas, D G A Z, which does have a lot of potential. And at this point, guys, I'm being very, very cautious. You know, I already made some pretty good money this week from you guys and uh, D gas, and I want to focus a bit more on my Facebook and McDonald's shares until you. You know, you guys, D gas, natural gas kind of wiggle out and figure themselves out here over the next couple of days. So before I do end off this video, let's talk about one more, which is JNUG. This is an ETF that trades based upon GDX. So GDX here, it's showing a sign of a breakout above these moving averages. But until we fully break above, I'd say 28 bucks, 28.50, I'm not going to go long on JNUG. And for those of you guys that don't know, GDX goes up. What else goes up? JNUG goes up. JNUG goes up whenever GDX goes up at a 3x rate. So we got the first breakout, which is above that moving average. We got the second one kind of peaking above this trend line. But now ultimately, I need to see a break above again, 2850. At that point, especially if gold, you know, continues to push up, which gold actually cracked back into 1500 today. You know, if that ends up happening, JNUG is going to be a, a, a good move in my personal opinion. So that is it for the video, guys. I don't want to be too long here on the video today. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Facebook group and put your email into the email list in the Strive Smart store if you want to be notified when the store goes live on November 4th, when there's promotions on the store, and when there are new products. All of those are linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. The support from you all means a lot to me. You're awesome. Peace out. What is going on, everybody?